the quick change that was a total that was the most disastrous one I ever had was with an actor named Dane Clark, and this was a couple few years later, I guess. And here's a uh, uh, this was a film about a boxer, not the one where I was in the ring, but this is a story told kind of backwards. We start off at present day when he is an absolute failure and a bum. And the, all of this hinges on the fact that he supposedly, at the top of his career, threw a fight and was disgraced and disbarred and all the rest of it. Uh, so here he is a bum, and I use my Eddie Sen's trick of the KY lubricant with black in it to make him all dirty and bummy and everything like that. And then after that scene, I simply wiped it off because we go now to a prior scene, which is his last job as a bartender. And in that scene, he, uh, a patron, drunken at the bar, insults him. And in a rage, he jumps over the bar and pummels this man to the floor. And of course, naturally he's fired. Well, they did this in rehearsal, and Dane got hurt a little bit. It was quite a feat jumping over this bar and landing on top of this other guy. Uh, and when he came to do it live on the air, a couple of things went wrong. What starts it is the patron has one of those long, tall beer glasses, those conical things, and he's supposed to throw the beer in Dane's face. Well, he misjudged, and he actually hit him. He hit him with the edge of the glass and cut the bridge of his nose mm -hmm. so that even before he got out of the scene, I could see blood starting to come up. Well, then Dane, of course, jumps on him, pummels him, and now goes, without any break, walks right into a scene again uh, earlier, a prior scene, in which he's sitting in his apartment uh, uh, breakfast room, having breakfast with his wife, who, of course, leaves him later. But. So we go back to that. And of course, Dane runs into this scene, sits down at the chair, and perspiration is just pouring off his face, and blood is trickling down his nose. Of course, I see this, and I have wiped his face as he goes by. That's all I can do. But as he sits, both blood and sweat are coming up copiously. I run into the, into the makeup room, which is right nearby, fortunately, grab a styptic pencil, come tearing back in. The scene is still on at the breakfast table. I run over to the bar set, which is dead, because I haven't wet the styptic pencil. You have to put it in water. There's a glass of water half drunk on the bar. So great, I swish this, this pencil in there quickly, styptic pencil, and wait for Dane, who comes out now rushing to another set. I wipe his face and go dab the styptic pencil on the blood to stop it, which, is, which it does. But as he charges by the bar, he's thirsty. He picks up the water that I have already put the styptic pencil in, which is alum and very drying, and he takes a drink. Immediately he tastes there's something wrong, but it's too, he spits out what he can. It's too late. I mean, it was just a bad luck thing all along. Then he charges on to another set. A, a, another, a little later, we, we come to the big climax. I think it was only an hour show. It wasn't very long. What's supposed to happen is, well, he's in, you see him go into the ring in his boxing trunks, uh, which he had underneath his clothes. So he got out of his clothes, goes into the ring boxing trunks. You, we hear all the noises of the fight. And he comes out of this. When, he, when this is over, he is supposed to appear uh, dressed and going home after the defeat. But to show that he really fought, which is the whole point of this story, that he didn't throw the fight, that he was really beaten. His face is supposed to be brutally beaten, all swollen up and puffy. And I've got to put these, all these bruises on behind this set in a narrow, darkish space, and he's got to get his clothes on again over his boxing trunks. And we only have like maybe a minute and a half, a really short time. He pulls on his trousers and the zipper sticks. And he can't, and now this man is struggling to get the zipper up, and I'm trying to hit this moving target with these pre-sticky appliances, these, these pieces of swollen cheeks and bruised eyes and all this stuff, and get that on. 
those, those moments when he struggled with the zipper and I struggled to get the makeup on him were about as frantic and desperate as I remember, certainly in terms of quick changes, and frightening uh, for both of us, obviously. We succeeded. The zipper got up, I got the damn pieces on well enough, and he went on to the next scene. But I swear, when that show was over, we both felt like we had aged 10 years. 